Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I um, have an update on the hybrid battery. Um, so I actually ended up ditching the small charger I had and ended up going with the same brand, just their beefier charger, the T180, to get the rest of my pack set up. And I will go ahead and do a couple things on this video. I want to go over, one, how I actually went in and balanced every individual cell. Uh, made sure that it was at a capacity that was acceptable. And then I also want to talk about which cells I replaced, why I replaced them, and also go over some of my results. Um, and we can touch on all that. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so starting with the charger. So after about five to seven days, I decided that the Tenergy T6B, whatever I had before, was just not going to cut it. So I ended up ordering not just one, but two of these T180 uh, Tenergy chargers, and they can discharge at five times the amount as the other uh, one. So instead of discharging at five watts, it would discharge at close to 16, 20. Um, and having two also really helped. And the way I did it, these chargers have programs that you can build into them, and they have them based on battery chemistry. So nickel metal hydride is the chemistry uh, that I used for my program. And I would use not charge, not discharge, but cycle. And when you click on cycle, yes, it is touchscreen. It comes with a little stylus here. You can choose the capacity, which for these Prius cells is 6,500 milliamp hours. The charge current could be as high as 6.5 because that's technically 1C or 1 times the capacity of the battery. Uh, but I chose 5 just to be on the safe side. And the discharge, we can discharge at 5 amps. That is safe for these batteries, so I went ahead and chose that. And you can choose your ending voltage, which for nickel metal hydride is technically 1 volt per cell. And if you've seen my previous video, you know that 1 volt per cell is going to be about 6 volts rather than 6.3. But again, protecting the cell a little bit, being on the safe side, I chose 6.3. And then on the second tab, you can choose the way that you're doing cycling. So that's a charge followed by a discharge. Then you can choose the number of times that you'd like to cycle through a charge in a discharge cycle. Um, and I chose, uh, I believe it was three for all of the brand new replacement cells I bought, and it was five for everything else. And then the delay timer is just how long would you like to wait between charge and discharge cycles. So I just chose five minutes, keep things on the short side. So I did that five times for every single one of these battery cells, I guess these modules if you saw my last video. Um, and then after I did that for all of them, I went ahead, put them in my spreadsheet which I'm going to jump to now so I can show you why I chose the cells that I did and also why it's important that you go through and cycle each cell more than once so you can get an idea of the capacity. So let's jump over there real quick. All right, so if you saw my last video, you probably recognize this spreadsheet, at least somewhat of the format. It has changed drastically since my last video. Um, but I have the module numbers here on the far left from 1 to 28, and then I also have R1 through R5 indicating the replacement number. So I wanted to make sure I labeled all of my modules and this number on the left side matches what I've put actually on the module um, in Sharpie, just so that way I can keep track of the modules. I have the starting voltage that I measured before I did any charging or discharging, again, just to capture that information. Um, and you'll notice those that I did replace, say uh, this module 18, 22, and even seven started at significantly lower voltages than uh, you would expect. And the reason I ended up replacing these is because I put them on the charger. The charger identified that, hey, something is wrong with these batteries and they cannot be recovered. So that was an automatic replacement for these three. And then you'll see, I'll start up at the top uh, and just use this module one as an example. When I first discharged and then recharged and discharged again, you'll notice I'm measuring the capacity as a factor of the discharge milliamp hours. And you don't want to do that off of the charge milliamp hours because depending on how much juice you can squeeze into the battery, you can technically overcharge a nickel metal hydride. They're not that unhappy being or, uh, overcharged compared to some batteries. Um, they will be more resilient in that way. Um, so that's why you typically want to measure in terms of discharge capacity. It's also what will give you a good representation of how well your car will perform with the individual module. So I went ahead and did this. Um, depending on the battery module, I would do it between three and five times. And you'll see here with module one, I went from 3,900 milliamp hours to immediately up to 5,000 milliamp hours on the second discharge. And then on the third, I went to 5,100. That's an improvement of 3%. Um, and then you can see um, as I went through others, some had more drastic improvement at, you know, 30, 40, even 50%. And actually I had one cell go from 1,500 all the way up to 5,300 milliamp hours. So 
getting to see the the cell start to increase in capacity as you cycle them that just has to do with the nickel metal hydride uh, battery chemistry that the more you charge and discharge them their the memory as they call it of the cell will will vanish and the true capacity will will shine through so um, once I did this with every single one of these cells I identified those that might be troublesome um, which is also module 23 and I also ended up replacing module I believe it's 20 nope I replaced module 26 um, you'll notice here the capacity ended up even after five at only 4600 um, just wasn't high enough you can see my baseline is typically around 5,000 milliamp hours with a design capacity of around 6.5 amp hours or 6,500 milliamp hours. I can get a general estimate that my pack will have close to 80% capacity from a brand new pack, which is pretty amazing considering it's a 2004 with 240,000 miles. So after I had all this data, I know the finish uh, capacity for each individual model in or module, including my replacement cells, I went over to the second tab in my workbook, um, which is actually the modules tab. Let me jump over there real quick. I called it the rebuilt pack tab. So once I click on that, I can get an idea of how I want to actually position these modules within the cell or within the entire battery. And you can see they're quite random, at least it seems in terms of numbering. But what I've done is I've lined up the block. So block 14 is paired with both the highest capacity module and the lowest. The idea here is that I'm going to get an average uh, for my final capacity for each block. And if you remember going way back to our first battery test, blocks is how the Prius interprets the storage or the voltage um, of each individual block. And if you have a block failure, that means one module within the block that fails, um, you will get that uh, red triangle of death and a warning indicating that your hybrid battery is failing. So having the capacity for each block be as close as possible is important. So that's why I decided to filter this. Um, I actually started with a filter in column B here for final capacity. And I sorted, um, say, ascending, for example. And I went through um, and I did from lowest to highest. And you can see here I did 14 down to 1, then climbed right back up. And then I went to column C and I sorted off of, um, I think I sorted descending to get 14 at the top. And I can get an idea here of... Um, of what I have, and this is the design capacity, 182 milliamp hours. Um, but here I can get an idea of where to position these individual modules within the pack. So when I go to re rebuild it, I know exactly where to put each individual module. So let's jump back over to the pack. I wanna show you what I did to balance each individual module, which is extremely important before you rebuild your pack. Um, so let's jump over there and I'll show you that real quick. All right, so we're back at the hybrid battery pack. Um, first thing I wanna point out is that I've actually removed all of these blocks and put them right back in to the holding uh, bars. And I've had this been, this has been compressed the entire time for all of the charging and discharging. You don't want any batteries or any of these modules to be outside of the compression pack when you're charging and discharging because they can swell. And then I actually do have some that swelled quite a bit. Um, and then over time they do, they do go back down so they don't have big gaps in them. And you can see that I didn't overcharge any to the point where they are uh, at completely different sizes or something strange like that. Uh, but what I did is I rearranged the packs so that all the negatives are on one side, all the positives are on the other. And what I've done is I've actually used, uh, believe it or not, I used solder. So I originally was going to actually use a copper wire. I was going to use speaker wire and try and trim that off. I got about that far, about six inches before I was like, this is a terrible idea. And found some solder and decided the way I was going to do this match up all of the positive sides. So I've looped this around the end, put the original bus bar nut on and gone over, under, over, under, all the way down. And then I did the same thing on the other side for the negatives. And for those of you that understand at least, you know, double AA, A, triple A batteries and how the voltages work here, or for those, it is the exact same concept here. Um, so when you have all the negatives hooked up together and all the positive hook, hooked up together, you essentially have one giant uh, module, but it's, or the same voltage of, a, of one module, but it's 28 times the capacity. Uh, so what I have here is the negative lead and I have the positive on the other side. I hooked this up to a charger for about eight hours and I charged it at about seven, um, seven, eight Watts. And that was equate, it was equivalent to one amp, which again, I used the Tenergy T180 to do that. Um, and then after that was over, I unhooked it, let it sit for about 16 hours. And now every single module is testing at the exact same voltage, which is what you want. This is called cell balancing. 
You want to make sure that all of these modules are at the exact same voltage, if possible, to the hundredths place, um, which I verified with my multimeter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now. It's not going to be on this video. Um, may touch on it in a future video, but I'm going to unhook all of this solder down the negative and positive side, rebuild the pack. I have everything sitting over here. And then I'm going to put it in the car and see how it turned out. But the method that I followed here is one that I believe to be repeatable. It does take time. It does take a lot of effort compared to just grabbing the three that I know have failed, just throwing in new cells, not doing any load testing, not figuring out the capacity of anything. But here now I have data to back up my claims that my hybrid battery is at 80% capacity because I've done testing on every single module. Um, and I think that's pretty much it today. That's all I really wanted to cover. Um, I don't really see this stuff covered, at least in this detail on YouTube typically. Um, so by all means, leave a comment if you have questions or you want to do this for yourself and you'd like to know how this works. Um, again, like I reiterated in my last video, anything you try, especially on a high voltage system, please be cautious. It is at your own risk to attempt to do anything of the such uh, to your own hybrid battery. And you also need to have at least some level of education on high voltage systems to understand, you know, what to touch, what to not touch. Uh, when you're working with high voltage. Now, thankfully, Toyota engineered a safe battery. These modules at 7 volts are very, very safe by themselves. It's only when you start hooking stuff together that it can get dangerous. Um, but that said, yeah, any questions, put them below. If you like this content, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like it, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any video ideas at all, please put them in the comments. I will, I have probably, I think we have five Priuses in the driveway. So, I am not going to shy away from any Prius ideas, uh, so I will see you guys in the next one, and this was a fun one. Talk to you guys later.